My work is about reflecting the joy of life. It's important to remind everybody that despite all the horrible news stories, life is very precious and very beautiful. For me, to find the visual joy in life and try and express it in paint is a very important thing to do and translate that into something for other people to see and to remind them just how wonderful the world can be. Welcome to Woman's Hour. Hope you had a good weekend. Busy week ahead here. And today on the programme we'll discuss a new a festival at the South Bank Centre in London. It's called The Art of Ageing. And we're delighted that we've got the fashion I designer. get very excited about the thought of a day in a studio. It's my most happy place to be. It's where I feel most at home. I suppose I'm cut off from the outside world. I'm in my own zone when I'm in there. But when it's going right, there's no feeling like it. It's just such a wonderful thing to be able to do. Being a painter is very physical, especially the way I work. Because I work so large and I work on walls, I'm using quite a lot of physical energy and movement. And that's important because it comes through in the final pieces. Sometimes I work flat, and that's to enable the paint to make puddles on the surface. Sometimes I work vertically on an easel, and that allows the paint to dribble. And all these different methods, all these different ways of working, give you a different result. And it's, it's interesting, it's, it's quite random, but it keeps you on your toes. I'm using sketchbooks that are concertina. So when I'm out and about, I can pull them out use several sections and I can tackle subjects that are in that format, bring them back to the studio and experiment. And the concertina format also gives you 72 faces to work on, folds down into this neat little A5 book so you can take it anywhere, which is really useful because if you take too much equipment it weighs you down and you end up not doing anything because you think oh, it's too much effort to get it out, I'll just sit here on this sunbed instead. But the other lovely thing is, because I work in mixed media, the failures get put behind the cupboard, probably for a year, and then they come out and they become the starting point for another piece of work. And it's always very good to get rid of the failures. I love painting over them, or jumping on them on the lawn, if they're really bad. And that's good to feel you've got rid of them. It's important to leave behind the ones that you really want to represent you and not have any also rans. And the only work I'm ever concerned about is that that I'm engaged with in the present. I think most artists are like that. And it's that particular one on the easel that matters. And that's the one that you wake up worrying about. And looking at the great masters, that's always been an inspiration. And these days, I'm even cheeky enough to use their work as a starting point. I think it's very important as an artist to keep experimenting and not to get stuck in a rut. And I find my mixed media methods help me with that. I love to go to art shops and see a new brush or some new paint that I haven't used before. I've always used sketchbooks in my work and these days I use the camera and the iPad just as much for gathering source material. I find the iPad really useful for composing. I've already reduced this to the same shape as the board that I'm going to use. And I've also done a series of sketches of the sunflowers that I did last autumn. I'm going to work from those. It's a combination of two ideas. And I'm now trying to prepare a board that would be suitable. And already it's got some random collage on and a bit of coloured gesso. And I'm going to add a little bit more paint before I get started in a random way. You can imagine my iPad gets covered in paint as well. I've ceased worrying about it now. So this is the final piece. It's going to be in four pieces, this particular work, and three of them are already joined up. So I'll show you those by unrolling it across the floor. I even had to wash the floor especially so that I can roll it out to show you. I'm often asked where I get my inspiration and my standard answer these days is, is life <laughs> because it's whatever comes upon me. And this recent one was unusual really. I just It was a dull day but we were walking on a beach in Cornwall 
and I suddenly thought the cliffs would make the most wonderful panoramic piece. But this was the initial study, just quite free and loose. And that's what I'm also trying to do, is to keep the freshness of the sketches. It's such a difficult thing to keep that spontaneity on the bigger pieces that take longer. And using the methods that I use in my sketchbook, I'm using them much more for the final pieces. So there's a lot of free-flowing paint. And because I'm working vertically, it flows downhill. Then I discovered these wonderful dribbles, which in this case are very redolent of the fissures in the cliff face. So I work with what happens with the paint, not against it. And I'm using lots of methods that are usually related with smaller scales, so things like wax resist, which many artists have used, John Piper, Ben Nicholson. Some of the paints I'm using now, I dilute heavily to get the resist effects. The older and the more experienced you become as an artist, the more you have to guard against doing things that you're very comfortable with. So I'm constantly on the look out for things that are going to throw me out of my comfort zone. So scale is one of those things. You really have to think differently. You have to have different tools, different equipment. You have to stand, you have to work from the elbow and the shoulder. The actions of easel painting are totally different. So the marks that you make because of that are different. That's all good because it means change and moving on and breaking new ground, which I'm always trying to do. I need a bit of help just to unfurl this end of the picture. Yeah. We recently went to see the new display of ceramics at York, didn't we? So there I was photographing all the penguin books rather than the ceramics. So that's what inspired me. But I've made up all the titles. They're not really proper novels. And there are some quite nice ones in there if you get to have a look. And best of all, I've enjoyed these big box files, which are the bane of everybody's life. Nobody enjoys a box file, do they? No. But mine are a little bit more fun because we've got one on golden days, one on and the rest. And then I've got errors and omissions and troubles ahead. And then just down here, Earth shouldn't invade Mars and slow the birth rate to make more room. When I go abroad, it is sometimes the buildings, sometimes the light, very often the landscape. But recently it was people. I never know where I'm going to get the inspiration from. It can take me by surprise. The greatest joy from my own work is when other people enjoy it. It gives me great pleasure when they tell me they've had one of my paintings on their wall for years and they're still looking at it and still finding new things to see. And it's great that I can be doing something that I really enjoy. I mean, how good is that? I'm not sure whether they're the right way round. Do they look the right way round? Are they talking to one another? No, they're, they're having an argument. Oh dear. Every now and then, probably twice a year, I have a painting that is great from start to finish. And that's a fantastic feeling when that happens. And that's what keeps you going, knowing that one day you will have that success. I'm so lucky to have really interesting landscape on my doorstep. We've got parkland and an orchard and a brook, and they're all forever changing. It's wonderful to go into the orchard when the apple trees are in blossom, but it's equally interesting when the frost is on the trees in the winter and the spiky silhouettes against the beautiful winter skies. And then down by the brook, when the ice comes and the snow, you get the most wonderful reflections of the sky and the trees and the shadows. Many of us, as we reach adulthood, tend to look less or what we see, we assume we see. I found this in my teaching as well. People assume that a tree has a brown trunk and green leaves, and it's only when I get them to look closely they see that there's every colour of the rainbow in the tree trunk. In childhood, and I see this in my grandchildren, 
the world is full of wonders and surprises and they're constantly seeing and exclaiming. But as adults, we no longer respond with perhaps the joy that we should. How I think about it, if the painting I did yesterday was the last one I'd ever done, I now have done quite a few that I'm really proud of. But I do worry what I do and I can't paint because I give so much time and energy to it. And I really haven't got any other hobbies. If not the painting's a hobby, but I haven't developed hobbies as other people do. Apart from my gardening, which I love, after a day in the studio to go out into the garden. When I'm doing similar things, I'm playing with colour and texture out there because it's another creative adventure. But if I couldn't garden and I couldn't paint, I would be very bad company. <laughs>